pods are not supposed to be long lived. They are supposed to die and live and live and live and so on, right? Really rapidly, like a one day flight or something. Hello and welcome to day seven of 100 days of Kubernetes, the challenge where I aim to learn something new each day throughout 100 days and share it with you here on my YouTube channel. So if you're interested in that kind of content, please subscribe. Now today I wanted to focus on replica sets. However, when I looked at my cluster and wanted to clean it up to uh, prepare for today's content, something strange happened. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so I just wanted to check out my MicroKates cluster. Uh, that's basically a local cluster that runs on my local machine. If you are interested in setting up your own Kubernetes cluster, just playing around with it, then check out one of my previous videos that walks you through how to set up MicroKates. You could also set up Minikube or another solution. Anyway, so I wanted to clean it up for today's video and I did kubectl get pods. And then I realized once I got the pods, wait for it, here. So let's have a look at what that says. Here's the name of my pod, basically the name that I gave it and then some random string that identifies it to be a specific uh, pod. Then here, the number of replicas that I wanted to have. In this case, I didn't specify more replicas. So I actually wanted to have just one. In this case, none is running. And as a status, I have crash loop back off. Let's look at that in a second. Next, I have restarts eight. So it assumingly restarted my pod eight times. Ooh, so it will just keep restarting and restarting and that within 19 minutes. Usually, I mean, pods are not supposed to be long lived. They are supposed to die and live and live and live and so on, right? Really rapidly, like a one day flight or something. Um, <laughs> but in this case, it restarted several times more than expected and it has a status that I don't like because something that I don't know of is scary and I don't want to see it. <laughs> so let's look at that. So as you might have remembered, we used something like this definition to create our last pod. Now the pod here that is misbehaving <laughs> misbehaving doesn't since it doesn't behave like we wanted to doesn't actually use this definition or any definition that we used yesterday however this part was created through kubectl create deployment deployment and then we used this fishy image that basically shot us an aquarium when we ran it um, so in this case as explained yesterday we didn't use the proper declarative ray of creating our pod. So we use an imperative way. We told kubectl straight away, please use this image and create our pod inside of our cluster using this image. Um, now the problem is this will create, no, I'm not creating it. I exited it, this command. Um, the problem is when I now look for you know, get pods, it will create the pod wrongly. It's configured wrongly and will create it wrongly. So, and actually what it does, it takes the Docker image, the container image that we provide through this kubectl command. What it is then, it tells, uh, kubectl will tell the Kubernetes API server, hey, please create a pod that runs a container with this image. Um, that will communicate with the other components within the master node and the worker nodes within our Kubernetes cluster. In this case, this all runs on the same node. Um, please create this pod running this container image. Now it will create both the pod and the container. It will run the container. However, since nothing is happening within the image, if we don't explicitly specify to run the aquarium, it will just create it, it will complete it, and it will stop, it will be completed. So we'll have for a second, probably, the status completed. And that's something that I saw earlier. Anyway, we will get into debugging into one of the future days. So it has created a pod, it <laughs> completed it, and then an error occurred. Now, why did the error occur? There could be a number of reasons why this error occurred. There could be um, either misconfiguration in the pod itself. For example, in this case, when the pod was configured, if you misconfigure it and an error occurs and uh, you have a reset policy of restarting whenever there's an error, the pod, it might restart, break, restart, break, restart, break, you get the idea, and then have a cr crash loop back off. <laughs> it could also happen 
that there's an error within Kubernetes. So that's something within your cluster went wrong uh, within the different components interacting with each other. And that's why something went wrong. That could also happen. Now, the third reason is that the application within the container, so the processes that are make up the application of our running container inside the pod, inside our Kubernetes cluster, they keep crashing. So there's something keeps failing within our application. And that's why Kubernetes is unable to run the pod um, it, it's unable to run the container inside our pod. And so it basically tries to reset the container continuously, um, but it keeps crashing. And that's why we have a crash loop pack off. Now, these are really frequent. So how do we deal with them? Let's look at what we actually did. In this command, we created a deployment, meaning there must be a deployment type of thing available somewhere. Now, kubectl, follows kind of a similar syntax, whether we want to get the pods or the deployments or um, just nodes or any other resource. It's just like get and let's look for deployment. What do we get? Oh, we have a fishy app that is deployed. Um, now, it shows that it's 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 a bit older, this deployment, than uh, the pod itself, which makes sense if it keeps running and crashing and running. Um, and now we want to delete this deployment because we don't want to delete the pod. If I try to... Now you might think, okay, Anais, why don't you just delete the pod? Why do you want to delete the deployment straight away? Well, in this case, I tried to delete the pod itself, but it doesn't work because we still have this deployment here. So you can't delete the pod because based on the deployment, we'll just recreate the container on the pod inside of our cluster. Also, there's nothing that we can change because we don't have a pod definition. We just created our pod in an imperative manner. And that's why you don't want to use imperative kind of syntax, but declarative syntax with your Kubernetes cluster to not run into these kind of situations. So what we're going to do next is delete our deployment. So let's do kubectl delete deployment. And then the name of it, our deployment, which is fishy app. In this case, I can just write it fishy app. And let's delete it. Now it tells me that the deployment has been deleted. So I would assume if kubectl and our Kubernetes cluster subsequently doesn't have access anymore to the deployment, they will actually have deleted our pod as well and there mustn't be any pod anymore running so let's check that get pods and no more pods awesome that's exactly what we wanted we now have a clean cluster again without a strange behaving pod with a crash loop back off so that's that's amazing now this is it for today i hope it was useful if it was remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for upcoming videos also if you made it this far you're clearly serious about learning kubernetes and devops related topics so you might want to join our devops learning group if you do just let me know on my twitter and i can add you to the group it runs on tribe so it's like its own social media of sorts since we don't want to use corporates like facebook no but yeah <laughs> additionally i have a weekly devops newsletter where i share free content related to devops and specifically kubernetes so sign up to that link below now this is it i hope to see you next time have a lovely day bye bye